So this is question number four. So the information given here is airplanes fly from city A to city B. Over a long period of time, the number of minutes delay in takeoff from city A was recorded. So the data that we are looking for is delay time. So the minimum delay was five minutes. So let me mark this. So five minutes, this is the minimum delay. That means this is our data. So if the data starts, the first data would be five minutes. And the maximum delay was 63 minutes. So if we have data here, the last data would be 63 minutes. So we have the first data and we have the last data. So this is the first data. and this is the last data now this two information has been given now a quarter of all delays were at most 12 minutes now the quarter means 25 percent which means Q1 remember Q1 means 25 percent of the data Q2 means half the data that means 50 percent of the data Q3 or the upper quartile means 75% of the data. So when they say that Q1, uh, quarter of all delays was were at most 12 minutes, it means Q1 is 12. So this is Q1. So this is 12 minutes. Then were at most 17 minutes. Half the data were at most 17 minutes. That means Q2 is 17 minutes and 75% were at most 28 minutes so this is 28 minutes so we have this three information given now only one of the delays was longer than 45 minutes now we don't know why they gave that information let's write it down 45 minutes over 45 minutes only one data we don't know why this information was given okay <coughs> and they have given information about an outlier is an observation that falls either one and a half times before the box plot IQR or one and a half times after the box plot so this means let me write down the formula for minimum value remember the first data and the last data they're the data that appears but the minimum value is from the box plot from the picture uh, it is one and a half times away so if you have a box plot like this and this is the handle this is called the minimum value and this handle this is called the maximum value so whenever we are talking about a box plot, these two handles, they are the minimum and the maximum value. Now, if we can calculate the minimum value like Q1 before Q1, so minus 1.5 IQR, which is Q3 minus Q2, that is IQR, the width of the box plot, and we have the maximum value Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. So these two values are all that we need. So let's get started. So this is question number A. They said on the graph paper, draw the box plot. But before we draw the box plot, let's write down the information. We know that Q1 is 12 minute. We know that Q2 is 17 minute. We know that Q3 is 28 minute. And we need to calculate the minimum value. So minimum value is Q1 minus 1.5 IQR which is 28 minus 12 so let's bring out the calculator so let me bring the calculator so this is going to be 12 minus 1.5 multiplied by 28 is Q3 minus 12 is Q1 that is IQR so this is minus 12 minus 12 now the first data is 5 
so minus 12 it's outside the data set so minus 12 there is no data that is minus 12 it doesn't exist so this cannot be the minimum value so if the minimum value is disqualified let's say then the first data becomes the minimum value so we can say therefore minimum value equals to 5 the first data 5 becomes the minimum value now let's calculate the maximum value so maximum value is q3 which is 28 plus 1.5 this is plus 1.5 iqr upper quartile minus lower quartile so this would be 28 plus 1.5 28 minus 12 28 minus 12 bracket closed it should be 12 bracket closed this would be 52 52 so the maximum value is 52 so the maximum value is 52 now this data 52 is within the data set that means 52 is somewhere around here so what about the last data which is 63 so that means that's an extreme value now because the maximum value is 52 so we write this outlier is 63 that's called the outlier and it is expressed as a cross so the outlier is put like this as a cross so that's the outlier that's a cross on the box plot so let's draw the box plot now so first of all when we draw a box plot there has to be one horizontal axis let me call it the x-axis and we have to label it according to the data so let's call this let's call this the axis let me so this is the this is the axis that we need and the name of the data is delay time so this is delay time that's the labeling of the axis okay now we need to start the data is from 5 to 63 so if we consider this to be 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 60 65 that's good enough let me write it down 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 so this would be 60 and this would be 65 okay now the minimum value is 5 so this will be the minimum value let me call this this is 5 the maximum value is 52 so it would be 50 51 52 this will be the maximum value now Q1 is let me check Q1 is 12 17 and 28 so q1 is 12 so we can consider this to be as 12 12 and then we have 17 so 15 16 17 17 is this one and we have 28 28 is this one okay let me join this this is not exactly very smooth okay let me join this okay so this is the box plot
now what we need to do is we need to put the outlier outlier is 63 so if this is 60 61 62 63 so we put a cross there so this is the outlier so we are done with the box plot of course this is not a very good box plot you need to use scale I just did that with freehand so this is a box plot you'll get a rough idea from this okay so from the next one we have the question comment on the distribution of delays now you know whenever we have to comment on the distribution of delay we have to talk about mathematical when they say justify your answer now here if we look at the box plot box plot skewness when you look at the box plot what what happens if it is like this it means it has no skewness that means this is q1 this is q2 and this is q3 that means this portion q2 minus q1 is equals to this portion q3 minus q2 but look here here in front of it there is more space so our situation looks like this whenever we have this it's called positive skewness and whenever we have a situation where it's more space behind the box plot it's called negative skewness so this one should be like this so we can see from here there is space in front so it is positive skewness so we write it is positively skewed and now we have to justify it it means we have to show it mathematically so mathematically we have to show that q2 minus q1 that means the one at the back is q2 is 17 minus 12 which is 5 and q3 minus q2 the space in front is 28 minus 17 and that I think would be 11 so we can see the front portion here is more than the backward so we can say since q2 minus q1 is less than q3 minus q2 it is positively skewed that's what it means okay let's move on to the next one the final one suggest how the distribution might be interpreted by a passenger who frequently flies from city A to city B now this is not a question from statistics or there is no statistical rule for this we just have to use our common sense for this answer that means uh, what we have to do is just looking at the data we have to decide whether it's good for the passenger whether they're upset or not how is the delay now if you look at the delay it's 50 percent that means the median 50 percent of the delay is around 17 minutes that means it's not that much and there is only one delay that was mentioned in the question which we didn't use at all there was only one delay that is longer than 45 minutes there was only one delay only one of them delay of was longer than 45 minutes so it should not be that much of a problem there is not much of a delay so we can just say of course you can have your own answer in your context this is not doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it means since half the delay is less than 17 minutes and there is only one delay over 45 minutes over 45 minutes so suggest how the distribution might be interpreted by the passenger the passenger the passengers should not be bothered that much so that's the answer